this is Tristan here from Guitar by Ear. Today we're going to be looking at M. Ward's new song, Migration of Souls. The first thing we need to talk about with this song is the tuning. Instead of standard tuning, we're going to tune the guitar so that our five smaller strings, the first five strings, are tuned to a B major chord, and then we're going to keep our low E on the sixth string. So from low to high, we're going to have an E on string six. We're going to have a B on string five instead of an A. So that's a B. Then on the fourth string, we're going to have a D sharp instead of a regular D. And the third string is going to be tuned down to an F sharp. The second string is going to stay a normal B. And the first string is going to be tuned down to a D sharp. Next thing we need to talk about is some of the chords that M Word is going to use in this song. Um, to make use of this tuning. Why do we use alternate tunings? We use them to discover some new sounds and play some voicings that would be challenging, if not impossible, in standard tuning. Um, so we're in the key of B for this song, as you might have guessed based on the tuning, but rather than play that basic B major chord that sounds nice on those five strings, whenever he goes to the B chord, he's gonna do a few different things instead. One of the main things he does is he plays that B chord, but he adds an F sharp in the bass with his second finger on the second fret of the sixth string here. So we have that. So that's one of the B major chords he uses as a home chord to keep going back to. Kind of resolved sound for this song. Um, then he also uses a B major seven chord also with the F sharp in the bass. And we'll get into that one a little more in a minute. Um, but the main one chord, the home chord we have, is that B over F sharp. Um, we also see a lot of the four chord. So in the key of B, if we count alphabetically from B, that's B, C sharp, D sharp, E. Um, so the E chord that we're going to see the most in this song is an E major 7. And so we're going to have our low E on string 6, but then we're going to have something that looks kind of like an A minor shape that we're all familiar with in standard tuning but moved up one, two, three more frets higher, so my hand is now in the fourth position. And this is now an E major seven chord. So we have the open sixth string, we have the open fifth string, then we have the middle finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string, ring finger is next, right underneath, then the first finger is on the fourth fret of the second string, that's our A minor shape, and then we have the open first string, which you'll hear, those are the same notes on the first string and the second string now. So that's our E major seven chord that's gonna show up in this song. So, so far now we have our one chord and we have our four chord. And we also talked a little bit about that one major seven that we'll look at later. Um, the next chord that shows up a lot in this song is the two chord. So in the key of B, that would be a C sharp and it's gonna be minor because in a major key, our second, third, and sixth chords want to be minor. So this C sharp chord is gonna to wanna to be minor. And the shape that he uses for the C sharp minor chord actually looks kind of like a B7 chord in our standard tuning. So it's gonna have our middle finger on the fifth string second fret. It's gonna have our first finger on the fourth string, then our ring finger on the third string, and then the open second string. And then instead of the pinky going on the first string like a normal B7 chord, we're just going to leave the first string open. And so that technically it's a C sharp minor 7 with a 9. After having talked about those chords, we need to talk about the rhythm. So the thing going on with the rhythm is he's providing a backbeat. Um, so normally a drummer will play the backbeat on beats 2 and 4. If we're counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 and 4 are where the drummer would be hitting that snare drum. And in this case, he's providing the backbeat himself with his hand. So he's doing this kind of So on beats two and four, he's hitting in on the guitar like this, using kind of the side of the thumb and a little bit of the fingers to basically make the strings kind of bounce off the frets a little bit. It gives it a percussive sound. The basic technique is we're gonna be using our thumb for the bass notes, and M. Ward actually uses only his index finger. There's a couple of videos of him playing through this song, and he's not using really his middle ring or pinky on his strumming hand. He's just using the thumb for the bass notes and the first finger to kind of do a flicking action with the fingernail. So he's flicking downwards with the nail and then coming upwards kind of with the fingertip. 
So he's doing like bass with the thumb, and then he's going, and I'm just muting all the strings right now so you can hear the rhythm. So it's like bass, down, up, bass, down, up, bass, down, up, bass. Or thumb, down, up, thumb, down, up, thumb, down, up, thumb. So that's the main rhythm throughout the song. He does do some fancy stuff sometimes where he's highlighting specific notes from the chords by being very particular about which string he's picking with his first finger um, on that upwards motion. Um, but to start out, we're just gonna do it with the basic motion. So the very first chord of the song, um, I'm going off of the recorded version that he released on his album. He does play it a little bit differently uh, live sometimes. So the first chord is going to be this chord, which is not one of the chords we talked about yet, um, because it's not a typical chord in our key. It's not the one chord, it's not the two chord. Um, this is actually an E flat seven chord um, with a G in the bass, E flat seven over G. There's the E flat seven and there's the G. And the job of this chord in the key is normally actually to pull us to our six chord. Our six minor chord is the saddest chord, darkest chord in our key. Um, in the key of B, that would be our G sharp minor. So we're expecting this chord to go here. But instead of going to that six minor chord, it actually kind of deceives our ear a little bit and instead resolves down that B major seven over F sharp, which is a really satisfying resolution, even though it's a different resolution than what we would typically hear. Um, so let's get into what those chords are. So for that first chord, the E flat seven over G, I'm gonna put my middle finger on the third fret here. It's still a G, because our sixth string is still tuned, uh, just like standard tuning to an E. So my middle finger's there. I'm gonna mute string five just by letting my middle finger be a little bit lazy instead of standing up tall. I'm gonna let it lean just a tiny bit onto the fifth string, not too hard, or I will accidentally bar the fifth string. So the fifth string will sound muted. Then my ring finger is gonna go on the fourth fret of the fourth string. Pinky's gonna go right underneath it on the third string. And the first finger is gonna stretch over gently to the left to the second fret of the second string. And then we're gonna have the first string open. So we have skipping the fifth string, right? Um, then he's gonna do that rhythm on that chord, so he's gonna go. And you can kinda hear da do ba do da do He's kinda highlighting different notes, but for now, we can just kinda do the whole chord like this to get into this rhythm. Thumb's always hitting the bass note. This is always doing a flick down up. All right, after we have that chord, then we're going to go to that um, B major seven over F sharp. So what we're gonna do is that bass note, mm, lay is gonna go down to so. If we're in the key of B is mm, do, we're gonna go down lay so. So that middle finger is gonna be replaced one fret to the left with the first finger. Um, then what he's gonna do is he's going to have the ring finger go to the fifth string. It almost looks like I'm playing a power chord except because we're in a different tuning, it's not a power chord. Then we are going to have, we're gonna have the middle finger on the fourth string on the third fret. Then we're gonna have the pinky on the third string on the fourth fret. And then we're gonna have the open second string and the open first string. This chord really only shows up during the intro of the song. Um, during most of the other parts of the song, when we see a very similar chord to this, he doesn't leave the open second string in there. He actually plays the second fret of the second string. And we'll get to that in a little bit. So for now we have these two chords. Right? Now after that, he's going to go to um, a new chord. Uh, live, I've actually seen him just jump to that C sharp minor seven nine chord that we talked about earlier. But in the original recording, you hear him go from this chord to, still gonna go to uh, open E in the bass, but we're gonna jump up here now. It's one of the coolest chords in the song, I think. Um, so this is an E minor six chord. So we're gonna have the open E on the sixth string, and it, once again, this looks kind of like an A minor shape, except this time we're actually moved up to the fifth string, so it's more like an E major shape, that kind of triangle but slid over to the seventh positions. My first fingers lined up at the seventh fret. So we have open sixth string, then the middle finger on the eighth fret, 
ring finger on the eighth fret, and then we have the index finger on the seventh fret, and then the open second string, open first string. Very cool chord, and one of the trickiest chords in the song I've found to get the um, precision on the finger picking down because those melody notes fall out of order. Normally we're used to hearing the lowest notes in the chord on the big strings, the highest notes on the higher strings. In this case, it's a little bit out of order because that third string note is actually higher than the second string note. And we have this doo doo da da doo doo doo. We have this little melody being brought out in the guitar part. And that's pretty tricky to do. I actually prefer to do it with at least two fingers instead of just the one finger, but M. Ward does it with just the one finger, and I've been working on doing it that way as well. Um, you can try it both ways and see what you prefer. Um, so after we have this E minor six chord, we are going to stay in this position and we are gonna just flip our fingers a little bit and we are going to get rid of the bass string, get rid of the sixth string. We're gonna have the first finger go up to the fifth string on the seventh fret. We are going to keep the ring finger right where it was on the uh, fourth string. We're gonna put the middle finger on the third string, seventh fret, and we're gonna have the open second string and the open first string. This is a B add nine, so it's our home chord again, our B chord, but this time with an add nine, slightly different voicing. Um, and in the uh, in the original recording, you can hear the bass, not the guitar, but I think it sounds like a synthesized bass going down to a um, D sharp actually underneath this chord uh, to get kind of a chromatic movement going from the open E down to the D sharp, but we're not gonna be able to do that on our guitar. So instead, we're going to play the uh, E minor six, and then we're just gonna get rid of that six string to go to the B add nine chord. Um, and then what he does on this one, he goes, doo -da -doo, and then he goes, bum. And to get that note, the middle finger is just gonna hop down to the second string actually doesn't change the name of the chord at all. It just changes some of the doublings, which notes are being doubled up and which octaves. Um, because now we have the open third string instead of the open second string, but we get the middle finger on the second string. So we have. Yeah, so we have those two chords right there. And let's see what we have so far. So we have our. Right and then. We have our right, and then from there we're gonna have our our. Uh, sorry, get rid of the sixth string. We're gonna have our B add nine there, and then we're gonna add the second string into that. Um, so that's most of the intro. go back to this chord, back to our starting chord, the E flat seven over G. Um, and we're going to go to almost the same chord here. Instead of going to B major seven over F sharp, we are going to go to a slightly different voicing. So what we're gonna do is, the way he actually does it, he uses his thumb to grab this F sharp down here, and he keeps these three fingers on that shape there, just like they were um, when we had the open first two strings. But now, because he's using his thumb here, he can have his index finger go down to the second string here. Now, I personally don't always love using my thumb in this way. Um, my thumb doesn't bend as great as some people's does. I can do it, but it's not as comfortable. So instead of doing it that way, I'll give you another option too, um, in case you fall into that same boat as me. Um, the other way of doing it is I just leave out this fifth string note. I find it kind of muddies things up. It's not totally necessary to be there. So what I'll do is I'll take that shape we were on earlier and I will move my middle finger down to the second string and I'll move my ring finger down to the fourth string. So now I have a uh, first finger on string six, then I'm muting string five, ring finger on string four, then I have my pinky over on the fourth fret on string three, and then my first, uh, sorry, my middle finger on string two, and then the open first string. 
some people that's going to be way less comfortable and you're going to prefer to do it with a thumb. Um, so you can decide for yourself which way you want. Then we're going to go to that regular um, C sharp minor 7 9 that we were talking about that looks kind of like a B7 chord but without the pinky. You can hear I'm going da do ti. We're getting a little bit of different notes being highlighted in that strumming pattern. But if you want to hold off on that for now, you can also just just get that basic rhythm down, thumb, and then hit with a down. So we're hitting in on the guitar as we flick downwards, and then we come up. We're gonna to resolve to that um, to that B over F sharp, and then we're going to go to that four chord we talked about, the E major seven. That looks just like an A minor shape, but in the fourth position. And this is what happens um, before the singing starts. It also happens during a lot of the interludes throughout the song in between the verses, um, where he's just going back and forth between the home chord, the B major seven over F sharp, the B over F sharp, and the, um, the E major seven. Even on those, I'm not. I'm leaving out the percussive hits for now, just because I feel like doing it a little more gently. Um, but I'm still going between the thumb and the uh, index finger because it's really fun to play with the changing in the tone between the warmth of the thumb and the brightness of the fingernail. And then I could choose to add more of that percussiveness in the if I just kind of slapping in a little bit more on the sixth string and the fifth string to get more of that kind of almost snare drum like effect. All right, so we have the whole intro so far and now we're ready to get into the verse and the good news is you've actually learned all the chords you need to know already. Um, so it gets easier from here. Now that we're into the verse, we're gonna start with that same chord we started the intro with, with that um, E flat seven over G. And then we are going to go not to the um, not to the second chord from the intro because that's actually not going to show up again. Instead, we're going to go to that one where you can either use your thumb and then grab the grab the second string with the index finger, or you can move the ring finger and middle finger down diagonally over to here, and you can have one mute three two sorry three four two one mute three four two and then open. So that's going to be the second chord of the verses. Right? And then from there we're going to go straight to the C sharp minor 7 9. Um, and sometimes you can actually hear an E being played underneath this kind of chord. Um, and that sounds nice as well. But um, in all the live versions I've seen, he leaves that out. He just plays the C sharp minor 7 9 like that. And then it's going to go to one, to our home chord, to B over F sharp. And then it's going to go to our four chord, our E major seven. And it's going to vamp back and forth, which means it's just going to rock back and forth between those two chords. And then when it's time for the next section to start again, it's going to do the same thing again. It's going to go to that E flat seven over G. And then again, it's going to go to this one. which you could also do with the thumb. And then it's going to go once again to the C sharp minor nine, and that's basically the formula for the verse, back to home. And what it does is, um, you could kind of call it a bridge of the song, I suppose. It goes up to that higher chord that we looked at that looks like an E major shape, but in the seventh position. And then it's gonna go to that other higher shape that we did, the B add nine. Kind of use those two shapes and then it's going to jump back down to here right or you can do it with the thumb the right um and then we're going to have and then near the ends of there when it goes to that c sharp minor nine this is the last little trick he has going on he's going to do this little hammer on thing with the bass notes so he's going to hammer the middle finger on he's going to play it with the open fifth string and then he's going to hammer the middle finger on. And then he's going to play the open fourth string and 
hammer the first finger on. So we have, and then strum the chord. So we're gonna have. The way I'm preferring to do it is I'm using the thumb for the first one, for the first hammer on. Um, then that. I'm actually using my first finger to do that so that I can get that percussive hit in there with it. So the thumb's doing the percussive hit while the first finger is flicking that fourth string to get the hammer on. And then we've got our home chord, our B over F sharp. Cool. Uh, well, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Um, if you're wondering why my channel is called Guitar by Ear, you can check out my website. It'll be up soon, um, learnguitarbyear.com. In the meantime, uh, my regular website is tristanjance.com, and you can feel free to shoot me a message on there, but I have a system for teaching you how to not only learn off of my videos, but actually how to figure out songs yourself right off the recordings. Um, for some of you that might sound like more work, but the truth is in the long run it saves you a lot of time. You'll be able to figure out songs that you can't find a video for yet, or you'll be able to find, figure out some songs faster than you could even look it up. Um, you'll also be a better judge of whether the source that you're learning the song from is playing it correctly even. Um, so if you're interested in some of my courses, those will be up soon and I'll post a link to my online courses. And I've also been teaching over Zoom. Um, so if you're interested in doing a lesson online with me, feel free to shoot me a message through my website. Awesome, have a good rest of your day.